Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. You know, when the president said yesterday that he was taking that anti-malarial drug, hydroxychloroquine, the drug he and his Trump TV buddies have been touting during the pandemic as a magic pill, I thought maybe it was just him lying. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. Hydroxychloroquine? I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. When? Right now, yeah. yeah when? A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. I mean, what do you make of that? The thing is, you never know if Trump's telling the truth. Usually safe to assume he's not. And maybe this was just part of the sales job. When I heard it, I immediately thought of that old 1980s commercial with a hair club for men, where the guy is not just the president, but he is also a client. These men are actual clients, not models. And men like you, who discovered that you don't need drugs or chemicals, surgery or miracles, to have a full head of hair. They get all the facts free, and without obligation, just call our toll-free number now, and I'll send you the new booklet. And remember, I'm not only the hair club president, but I'm also a client. I'm not just the president, but I'm also a client. I thought maybe Trump was, you know, vouching for it, but was he really taking it? So then we got uh, some substantive reporting that really does make me think he is taking this drug to try to ward off the virus, even though it is not recommended by his own government agencies. You'll remember it was almost two weeks ago when the president's personal valet, the guy that brings him his Diet Cokes, tested positive of the virus. That was then followed by another White House staffer, Mike Pence's press secretary, who also tested positive. And I think it's fair to say those two cases clearly freaked him out. Yesterday, the president's personal physician released this weird doctor's note saying that after those positive tests, and I quote here, we concluded the potential benefit from treatment outweighed the relative risks. Now, to be clear, this is a hilariously equivocal document. It does not actually flat out say Trump is taking the drug. It seems to suggest that he is. And then today, the White House confirmed that, yes, Trump is taking it. Again, as with everything in this White House and this guy, who knows for sure? But the timeline does match up. And assuming it's true, which I, I, I've come to believe is probably true, the president is taking this drug off-label, prophylactically, against the advice of his own government agencies that are tasked with, you know, figuring this stuff out. It was less than a month ago that the FDA warned of heart problems from taking the drug, specifically dangerous abnormalities in heart rhythm. Even some of the folks on Trump TV said what the president was doing was nuts. If you are in a risky population here and you are taking this as a preventative uh, treatment to ward off the virus or in a worst case scenario, you are dealing with the virus and you are in this vulnerable population, it will kill you. I cannot stress enough. This will kill you. The president has been obsessively hawking hydroxychloroquine like he is a salesman for it. And, and the, you know, we should be clear here. There were some early studies that suggest it was promising. Later data has called that into question. It's still sort of an open question, although I think the bulk of evidence leaning towards no. But the president has been on this from the beginning. And at first, the question was like, what is the angle here? <laughs> Why is he obsessed with this? Some people jumped on the fact uh, that Trump has a very small personal financial interest in the company that makes a brand name version of the drug. But it's a pretty small interest, and it's fairly attenuated, and the notion that, that this was all being driven by that financial gain didn't quite make a lot of sense to me. More compelling was ousted vaccine expert Dr. Rick Bright's suggestion that the administration was pushing the drug to benefit politically connected allies. So that also might be true. Uh, that's what Dr. Bright says. But it always just seemed possible that fundamentally the reason was that Trump just believed his own BS. I mean, here's a guy who has been pumping conservative media into his brain for a decade or two at least, and that entire universe runs on advertisements for magic pills and supplements that will cure all your ills. Let me say that I have never before endorsed a pain reliever. But when Pete and Seth Talbot, the father and son owners of Relief Factor, asked me to endorse their 100% drug-free product, I absolutely couldn't say no. My sister started taking collagen. Yeah. She noticed her hair, her hair got thicker, her nails got stronger, some of the fine lines in skin. She noticed changes in, in her appearance. You know, you've got those um, uh, powders. Do anybody, uh, have you had anybody have a bad reaction to them, or is it all pretty benign? 
No, you know, I've never had anybody have a bad reaction. Your genetic flaws, assuming that we all have them, they can actually be cured with a vitamin? It, it seems that way. I want you to get the ultimate krill oil. I want you to get vaso beans. I want you to get DNA Force Plus. I want you to experience X2. I want you to get Real Red Pill and Real Red Pill Plus. They're all in stock right now, and they're 30 to 60% off. Uh, we could have made that monologue uh, montage like eight hours long. Oh, and by the way, Trump himself actually started a vitamin company that, of course, went bust, uh, which offered a urine test to recommend, recommend customized nutritional supplements. One doctor called its claims, and I quote here, quite insane. But the notion the president is taking this drug speaks not only to his past, but also to the way he has gone about this entire catastrophe more broadly from the beginning. Always, always looking for some magic bullet, for some easy solution, the magic pill. The Washington Post reported last month that Fox host Laura Ingram and two doctors who are regular on our guests in what she dubs her medicine cabinet visited the White House for a private meeting with Trump to talk up the drug. And he loved it. He was sold. He took the advice of Laura Ingram's medicine cabinet over his own government's medical experts. The depressing reality here appears to be this, that this isn't some 12th dimensional chess. It's not even some uh, corrupt angle he's working. The president literally thinks there is some secret magical solution. Donald Trump is his own mark. He is the president and literally also a client. He views the coronavirus fight not as an extremely complicated and difficult problem that requires marshalling together a huge spectrum of expertise and knowledge to weigh and balance risks and replicability and controlled studies and safety and efficacy and all that stuff. No, he thinks he can be waved away or it could be denied or it will go away like a miracle or just pilled away. That there's got to be some easy solution out there somewhere. And when an actual real scientist like Dr. Rick Bright tries to stand in the way of the administration flooding states with this magic pill, Trump gets rid of him. And so at this point, when the whole world is figuring out what to do now, what do we do now? Having absorbed much of the first wave of the pandemic and its death and illness and misery and economic ruin, and the World Health Organization and others are exchanging information and research. And there are international examples to draw from and all sorts of experts with different views on this, chewing through these difficult questions. We are being led by the guy who wants a magic pill to solve all our problems. 